there, I'm Joseph. And I'm Mariana. And today we've got quite a special episode for you. I've been telling Mariana how excited I am for this one. We're, uh, we're on our good friend's farm, Senor Pinto. And uh, you might remember this from another episode we had when we were shearing the sheep. We, uh, we come to this farm and this, this is where we done it. And um, yeah, he's a very, very dear friend of ours. And he's asked us to film this farm because he wants to sell his farm. Um, he actually doesn't want to sell it. It's with, it's with a very, very heavy heart because he's, um, he's just come out of hospital. He's had a, a major heart operation. So it really is with a heavy heart that he's having to let this place go. He just can't work it anymore. Um, but it is one of the most beautiful farms I've seen around, especially on this side of the Gardenia. We've got the Cerro de Gardenia behind us there and it's an absolutely gorgeous view of that mountain. It's, uh, it's got quite a few features, this place. Um, I'm quite excited to show you, so let's go take a look, yeah. I think. Yeah, we'll let's go. Okay, we're now down here. We've walked down to the very bottom field on the farm and uh, it has got this spectacular lake. I've been told this lake is 1,130 square meters and, uh, and rather deep as well. I was quite eager to show Mariana this. I, it's, got my, it's got my fishing senses tingling, but yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we, were just, we were just spotting some, some, uh, some birds over there. There's, there's a mother moorhen and all her chicks uh, swimming behind her, which is which is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I've been here a few times. Mariana hasn't. But I've been here a few times, and uh, I've always seen the moorhens here. And a couple of times, I've seen a couple of uh, mallards as well, which fly in and out. So they're not here today. But um, yeah, we were looking, and there was actually some some risers. And I've been told that there is some big some big grass carp in here. So it would be an absolute dream to fish. And I already know what I would do if it was mine. I would get a little jetty built over there. I'd build a little jetty, I'd tie a little rowing boat to it and probably plant a nice willow tree, salgado, no? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think Mariana, it would be her dream. I wouldn't, she wouldn't see me all day long. I'd be fishing all day long. <laughs> uh, but this, this lake, uh, it's, it's mid-August now. And this is at the brim. It's filled to the brim. So that tells you that it doesn't lose water. You know, it sits full year round, which is, which is, pretty unheard of really even the, the big main rivers here in Portugal they're all dried up at this month of the year so um so yeah this is this is a this is a dream this lake it's fantastic and uh, it's actually it's got um, a pump down there as well so uh, what what my friend Senor Pinto would do is he would pump all the water out here onto the fields and uh, and it would spray this water out so he'd plant barley and things like that and this water would spray out like that and it would just it would just keep it irrigated nice and lush and green all year round and uh, there's nobody around here whatsoever. It's an absolute dream. All, all that you've got around you is just forestry. Just forestry and the Gardunia mountain. It's, it's beautiful. But the forestry is far away enough where it's not going to be a problem in the middle of the summer. So it's, uh, it's absolutely perfect. But yeah, shall we go and, uh, go and have a look around the house now, yeah, I yeah. think? Yeah. yeah, let's go, yeah. <laughs> There's meadows beyond meadows beyond meadows. <laughs> I didn't even know this part existed. You know, sabia esta parte existe. No sabia. Wow. That's a bit. Yep. Will meet. Perfeita. Mais carvalhos, mais oliveiras. Vai até lá, no caso. Lá adiante. Okay, okay. Andar aqui, quer. Sim. E olha para esta muro ali. Está linda, não é? Está linda. Esta muro. Wow. E o muro aqui está ao limite também? Não, 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 o limite não. não. O limite é lá em cima. É lá. O limite é lá em cima. Ok. É a rede para além para cima. A gente já vai aqui por cima. Muito terreno, Sr. Pinto. Estás Muito terreno. Ver? 
so we're just uh, we're just walking the limit here and wow it's uh <laughs> It's a nice, nice amount of land here. I mean, if, if you got this land here, you, you probably would need some animals because uh, it's a lot to, to do by hand. So, Carvalho. so Carvalhos, yeah. So lots of oak trees above us and yeah, absolutely gorgeous. There's wood, Pinheiro. wood. Pinheiros. 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 So there's right. pine trees and oak trees and olives and figs and apples and cherries and everything. And uh, yeah, if, if, you had a, if you had a house here, then you're gonna, you're gonna need a wood burner and uh, yeah probably a few sheep or a few goats to keep everything in check the good thing is that it's all it's all pastured off every 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 part of the land is is fenced in you could either take the fences down or put more in or but yeah it's all it's all set up as a as a working farm it's absolutely marvelous it really is Ah, isso vai com calma. Isso vai com calma. Então estão boas ou quê? Não. Parece que sim. Não, estão grande coisa para faltar no bacalhau. Ora, vamos. É mais logo. É mais logo. Agora já chega. É. Okay, so Senor Pinto has just took me to the very corner of the land here, and we're on the east side of the land here, the southeast side. And uh, yeah, where that green fence is there. That goes right down to the corner and this he was just telling me this used to be uh, cherry orchards but because he is uh, is is more of a livestock guy than uh, than an orchard guy he said he couldn't really have both things the 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 sheep and the and the goats they were they were chewing up the trees so he said he got rid of those he needed a bit more space for his pasture but of course you could fence this off and uh, if you wanted to have both you could have uh, you could have your orchards here it's an absolutely perfect place for the orchards because the neighbor over there has got an apple orchard so you can tell that the uh, that the ground here is absolutely perfect for it so yeah so this would make a, a perfect place to, to have an orchard obviously this used to be cherry but you could you could make it whatever you wanted or you could just plant a, a variation of different trees which is which is what most people do especially if they're not if they're not looking to, to sell the produce if they're just just after produce for their own house for their own family but um, what you also have got here is all of these oaks and pine trees and everything here and they they just make fantastic wood so if um if you had a, a wood burner in the house up there then uh, you wouldn't need to you wouldn't need to buy wood i'm sure about that wow <laughs> marvelous okay and we've just come up to the next level and uh <laughs> you can you can see the the closest neighbor all the way over there so so you've got another another level up here another terrace and uh, yeah that's your closest neighbor over there so so you know you're not gonna you're not gonna be pestered you're not gonna be uh, <laughs> not gonna be on top of anyone that's fantastic <laughs> okay so we've just finished looking right around the farm now we had a look at the lake and we had a look at all the different terraces and everything and uh, and now we're coming up to the the last thing before we show you the house this is the uh, this is the the, uh, the barn and uh, my, my friend senor pinto he had this constructed it's um it's a jolly it's a jolly big barn it's 200 square meters so it's uh it's nice and large it's got it's got space for all his uh 19 sheep, I think, Mariana? There's yeah. an odd, no, yeah? yeah? It's got 19 sheep in here, so it's got space for that. He's got uh, a tractor, he's got a few vehicles, some trailers, loads, loads of, uh, of, of hay bales, and uh, yeah, this, this would make for a perfect place for, for, for uh, storing all of, your, all of your farm tools and everything, and even housing some animals. Hey, guys. Hey, they're a little bit nervous. They they don't recognize me. <laughs> hey guys. He's got 19 sheep in here. He's got the tractor, two vehicles, a trailer, all of those hay bales behind me over there and uh yeah, so this is a this is a fantastic barn, 200 square meters, right? Yeah. 200 square meters so you can fit all of your all of your farm tools and everything in here. And uh and yeah, now I think we're going to go and have a look at the uh, at the house. Carreira não 
Onde é que a bolsa lá é legal? Até aí um bocadito de... Aí, olha aí, a gata. Okay, so we've been up to the barn, and now we're uh, now we're up to the house, and we're going to have a little tour around the house, and uh, it's uh, it's fantastic. It's right at the very tip top of the land. It's got um, it's got a, a borehole which uh, which works 24 hours a day, so it's constantly got water. It's got electricity as well. The house does need reconstructing, but it's uh, it's got this fantastic this fantastic view behind us here. It's absolutely marvelous. Okay, and here's the house here. Okay, so we're now going inside the house. The house needs uh, reconstructing, but it's uh, it's got this beautiful, it's like a type of sheeshed rock. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it's all like that, apart from the other two doors, which have got granite around them, which is absolutely gorgeous. The house is, is pre-1951. Wow. So the old the old fireplace here. Look at that. Tem uma porta aí para dentro. So the house is, is habitational, so um, obviously you couldn't live in it how it is. But it's got the license for habitational. Yeah. Look at that. Wow, it's like a museum. It's gorgeous. It's up for tudo. Tudo, tudo. Anda lá, agora para aí, para o teu lado. Para lá. Anda para aqui. Cuidado no caso de Mariana, que isso não está muito rosto. Não, cuidado no caso de Mariana. So that you've got the uh, the kitchen as you walk in here. There's the room behind it. As you walk in here. Antigamente vivia muita gente. Sim. Antigamente. Okay, okay. So people lived here before. So the, the house is, is licensed for habitational and everything. So, uh, so yeah. So what you would need to do is take everything out of the the, the walls are all good. The walls are all good. Yep. See. Oh, Mariana, talvez fique aí tu. Oi. So the walls of the house are all good. You just need to do the, uh, the inside, gut the inside. And we're now in the lot. Estão sobrado. Estão sobrado. Wow. Asnes. Tem asnes. See, 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 it's good wood, it's good wood. And you could even make a bedroom up here, I guess. Or, or you could raise the, raise the walls up. Fantastic, yeah? Muito bem, muito bem. Sim, perfeita. É. Atrás de So this would uh, 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 sabe os metros quadrado? Ela tem 17 metros de 17 metros de frente fora a parte da lã. Ok. 17 metros de frente. 17 metros, so 17 metros on the front. 17 por 10 ou 12. Ok, 17 por 10 ou 12. Ok, so 17 by 10 or 12 metros the house. So it's a. Uh... Posso? Pode. -se. So it's got. A bit dark in here, sorry. Mas ainda há outra do lado lá. Outra, outra no outro lado? Sim. Vamos a fora para ver? Sim. Ok, sim. ok. Tem ali outro quarto, amor? É, sim, sim, sim. Perfeito. Claro. Era quarto antigamente? É, é grande, a casa é grande. E aquilo era quarto também? Sim, é. Daqui é que são 17, olha. 17 daqui. 17? Fora aquilo. Ok, ok, sim, so not including, not including the outhouse there. 17 metres. The set meters. So 17 meters 
17 uh, by, uh, a doors. 17 by 12. So it's a, uh, it's a fair size house and all the walls are rock and they're good. So obviously the house would need uh, completely gutting out, but uh, the, 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 rock, the rock walls are all there and they're perfect. So 17 by 12 the house and it probably wouldn't take wouldn't take an awful lot to to get it back to its back to its former glory I think it's uh, it's fantastic Is <laughs> outra outra So you could have this as a as a <laughs> workshop or something like that What's for the quartz for Eh Pronto for quartz Sim 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 Vamos de que lado uma entrada para aqui para quartz On the end of the house there a workshop or something like that, yeah. Okay, okay. Abrias mais entradas. Sim. Aqui abrias mais entradas. Para casa de turismo. Abrias mais entradas para fazer quartos ou casas de banho. Esta okay. parede aqui era era tirada um bocado. Okay, perfeito. Para ficar com mais largueza. Ok, sim, sim, sim. Isto aqui, a parede é tirada mais. Ok. Estás a perceber? Yeah, yeah, sim, sim, eu percebi. Yeah. Fica mais larga. Ok, so we've just left the house there and uh, obviously the house needs completely reconstructing. It, um, it's got good outer walls and the inside needs completely gutting. Uh, that is, however, the only big expense that, that is required on the land and that's the same with most farms around here in central Portugal. Uh, here, though, however, Senhor Pinto was just telling me there is this this gorgeous uh, borehole here and this borehole it's uh, it's 70 meters deep and it's been cleared for drinking water and it runs with uh, about three to four thousand liters of water an hour 24 hours a day it does not run out so it's absolutely perfect and that's because we're on the uh, on the side of the gardunia mountain here so we're right into a water vein and it's uh, it's perfect you've also got the uh, municipal electricity if you didn't want to go for solar or anything You've got that already hooked up to the house, so you've got your electricity here. There's no extra costs for getting electricity, it's already hooked right up. So you do just need to, uh, just need to construct the house. And then obviously anything on top of that would be, uh, would be superficial, so things like swimming pools or, or something like that. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's perfect. It's, it's situated about 10 minutes walking distance from, uh, from, the, from the village of Suta de Casa. So that village has got, uh, it's got um, eight, eight cafes, it's got a restaurant, it's got two bakeries, it's got two mini markets, it's got a butcher, it's, um, it's got everything. And uh, the house is not on a main road either, it's down a, a little dead end track. So, so you've only got about two or three, two or three other neighbors and they're, they're all farms. So the houses are quite far away from this one. Um, but yeah, so it's been, it's been quite tranquil here. We've been here for about an hour, hour and a half and there's not been, not been one car come down this road so it's perfect and because it's right near the village you you know you're you're, you're safe but you're also you're also nicely isolated you know you're not too out in the out in the forest or anything but yeah it's it's nice it's a nice farm but yeah <laughs> now we're gonna go and have a another little look around some things that we haven't seen <laughs> Okay, and uh, Senor Pinto is just telling me that, uh, that I haven't seen this level down here yet. And uh, apparently there is, there's about 100 and, 100 and something, 130, 140 olive trees. There's a, there's a fair few. So I'm going to ask him in a minute how much, how many kilos of, of olives he gets every year. But I know last year he was telling me it was quite a few kilos. But wow, look at this. <laughs> this is perfect. You could, have, you could have horses here, sheep. You could even have cattle if you wanted. The, you couldn't have many of them, but you could have some goats whatever yeah ducks down on the lake perfect <laughs> this is like like a dream farm for me i don't know about all of you guys please let me know but i think i think for me it's a dream farm look at all these olive trees and we've got here a couple of couple of cherry trees and you can tell pinto's really he's really uh really really passionately involved with this farm he's he's off marching away <laughs> he loves it Look at that view back there. That's the that's the Serra da Gardunha mountain range there that Suta de Casa is situated on. It's a beautiful village. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> é por aqui? Wow. You can see the girls down there. There's Zezza and Mariana, <laughs> Pinto's wife. And the house, you can't see it now, but it's it's behind there. We walked we walked down here. 
Wow. Até logo. Adios, obrigado. <laughs> obrigado. Okay, so we've just left Pinto's farm now, and my word, what a lovely, what a lovely farm that is for sale there. And I thought I'd just quickly show you the uh, the private driveway that leaves the farm. It's uh, it's about a 200 meter driveway, and it's uh, <laughs> it's got some resident geese that I'm sure you just heard, <laughs> and these spectacular views behind, of course. And uh, yeah, it's about 200 meters from the uh, from the main tarmac road. It's uh, completely private. It's a dead end, and uh, it's all made out of these cobblestones here on the floor. So it's uh, just a nice accessible driveway. It's got electricity that runs right to the gates. It's got its own uh, drinking water source, the borehole, and enough water for irrigation. So it's um, yeah. Pretty perfect, pretty perfect place. And um, and if you were to buy it, it's not it's not that far away from uh, from our farm. So uh, <laughs> noisy geese. And uh, yeah, it's not that far away from our farm. So we would be on hand to uh, to, to show you the 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 good builders to use, the cheap builders, the plumbers, the electricians, um, any translations that you needed if if you needed any. Then uh, yeah, we'd be we'd be more than happy to help. <laughs> so yeah, let's go back to the farm, I guess. And. Do a little something there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> down at the, uh, the black fawn and the bramble bushes and we've picked ourselves a nice big basket full of, uh, full of slows and blackberries. And uh, as you've probably guessed, we're gonna be making a, a slow and blackberry gin today. And that's, um, that's a really nice, super simple, easy thing to do. Um, normally speaking, you'd, you'd be looking to pick your slows um, sort of towards the autumn time when the, when the ground's a little bit colder and, and uh, when the slows fall, they, they crack and that helps the infusion along. Well, uh, it's not like that in Portugal. You pick them a little bit earlier. They ripen a bit earlier on the trees. So we've uh, we've started picking them now. They're they're just about ready, as you can see here. And you will need to uh, you will need to prick the the slows to help the infusion. But um, what I've done instead of that is uh, I left them in the freezer for a few hours. So I think I left them in the freezer for about six to eight hours, and uh, and that's helped them all help them all split and and start to crack. And and now they're uh, now they're they're ready to absorb some of this lovely gin. So what we've got here is we've got roughly the same amount of, maybe a bit more in fact, but roughly the same amount of, of slows and blackberries as what we do gin in weight, and about half of that in sugar. And uh, yeah, first things first, we're gonna mix the, uh, mix the gin and the sugar, and then once that's dissolved in there, we're gonna pop the blackberries and the slows in, and, uh, and that's, that's, roughly, that's roughly it, that's, that's about it, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then you just, uh, you just let it sit for about, for about two months, uh, three months, something like that, maybe even longer, shaking it every couple of days to begin with, uh, towards the end you don't need to do so much shaking. Um, leave it in a nice, cool, dark place, uh, like the back of a cupboard or something like that, 
and then uh, bring it out just in time for the holiday season. And uh, that'll be perfect. Uh, a lot of people have it in have it in different ways, like have it hot and, and, and with mixers and things like that. But I prefer I prefer the taste of gin just as it is, so I uh, I have it neat. But um, but yeah, that'll be nice on a on a cold winter's day. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have had an absolutely lovely week on the farm, and uh, and yeah, I showed you uh, I showed you Pinto's farm this week. Uh, that's an absolutely wonderful buy. That farm, it really is a fantastic place. Uh, it would be perfect for anyone that's not that's not scared of maybe doing a uh, doing a, a big building project. Um, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be too much of a risk, however, because I, I live not too far away from that farm at all. And, uh, and yeah, like I said earlier, I'd be more than happy to, to help with any translations if you need it in Portuguese, or, or I can show you the builders. I mean, I, I've, I know some fantastic builders that work relatively cheaply compared to, compared to other builders around, and, uh, and yeah, they would do a, they'd do a fantastic job, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't cost that much at all, really, so it really would be a fantastic place to buy. Um, but yeah, what have we done? We, we've uh, we've picked some slows and some blackberries. We've uh, we've bottled those up now. They're, they're in their jars. They're going to infuse for a few months. Should be ready by Christmas time. And uh, in the vineyard here, we're, the vineyard's nearly ready. We've got probably less than a month now, I would say, until the uh, until the wine making process begins. So I'm uh, I'm really quite excited about that because my uh, my wine stores are now looking a little bit <laughs> a little bit low. So that'd be good for me. And uh, we've got some apple trees in there. They're Bravo de Schmoff, which is a uh, a Portuguese variety. And they're, they're really rather nice. They're nice yellow, sweet variety. They're not too big, but they're, they're lovely. But yeah, thank you very much for, uh, for watching along with us this week. If you want any information about Pinto's Farm at all, then please feel free to, to message me on Facebook, on Instagram, Patreon, of course, anything like that. And, uh, and I'll help out with, with anything that I can. But yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much to the Patreons. Uh, it really is it really is handy that that you guys are contributing. It means that I can continue making this content. So thank you guys very very much. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Thanks a lot. <laughs>